Hi, I'm Nicolleen Peck and I teach parenting all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. I also teach a lot of problem-solving skills in connection with that, which a lot of people call common sense. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to teach common sense to a child. <music> Many parents wonder, how come my child doesn't just understand common sense? How come they keep making the same mistakes again and again? How come they do things that don't seem to make any sense? Well, it's because common sense is something that people have to learn through experience. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to set up an environment where common sense can be learned. So what is common sense? This is a term a lot of people use. When a person has common sense, they're able to see pieces and troubleshoot something. They're able to get from one spot to another spot more quickly than somebody else because they're able to have deductive reasoning and they can process their situation sometimes a little bit more quickly. Now, do all children just come possessing common sense? No way, it's something that you learn over time. There are some people that are probably a little bit more adept to having common sense than others just because of how their brain function is. And there might be some people who struggle a little bit more at putting together all of the pieces so that they are able to have more common sense. But regardless of what type of brain processing your child has, there are things that you can do to help teach common sense to your child. So teaching self-government is based upon the principle of self-government. This whole channel is all about teaching self-government to children and families. The definition of self-government is being able to determine the cause and effect of any given situation and possessing a knowledge of your own behaviors so that you can control them. So what you see right there is that that's problem solving, that you're saying, what's cause and effect? How did my causes relate to certain effects and what was it that I did and how can I change me? That's what a person does when they are a self-governing person. That's a lot of problem solving right there. In order to create an environment where a person can learn this self-government, you have to have a culture put in place that actually supports that type of a teaching. So in the teaching self-government model, I talk about creating a family government government. In a family government, everyone uses the same principles of self-government. So if there's a skill that the children need, probably there's a principle there and the parents need the skill too. So there are four basic skills of self-government that I teach. They are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and then disagreeing appropriately. So those four basic skills are just four skills of self-government. There are many others that I teach as well, but those four basic skills lay the foundation for really good common sense training. Each one of the four basic skills is actually broken into their pieces. Once the skill that you're trying to master is broken into pieces, then you can see your situation more clearly and better conclude what the problem is that you're really facing. So let's say that I teach my children the skill accepting no answer. The steps to accepting a no answer are to look at the person or the situation, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say, okay or ask to disagree appropriately and then drop the subject. So let's say my child knows that skill and I say to my child, no, you can't go out and play with your friend. And they go, okay. And they walk away. Now they did say, okay, and they didn't go out to play with their friend, but where was their face? Was it calm? No. And when they walked away, are they really dropping the subject? Hmm. I'm not sure but probably not if they're not calm right then in the moment. So now what I can do is I can bring up to my child that they did all of the steps of accepting a no answer except the step for keeping a calm face. And now they know the piece that they need to work on. Maybe that's the part that they always want to express their emotion with or they always want to try to convince another person with is their face. Everyone has their thing that they pick but they really should be disagreeing appropriately if they feel like it's something that they don't agree with or that they don't like. 
We can always discuss anything. They don't need to spend time getting themselves in a bad mood and trying to manipulate with certain behaviors. But if I explain those things to my children, then they have a better understanding of what they do. Now, next time they have a situation where a no answer comes up, they have a lot more understanding. This gives them more of a common sense approach to solving all of their problems, not just accepting basic no answers. When we break things out, it helps us see the picture more clearly. This leads to more common sense understanding. Also, if you know how to discuss things with people and in a way that's non-emotional, but in a way that's very productive, this also helps produce just overall common sense. In the teaching self-government parenting model, we have certain meetings that we have together as a family. There are three different meetings we have. We have couples meetings, family meetings, and then individual mentor meetings. And we keep all of our meeting notes in these meeting journals. So this family meeting and mentor meeting are going to be the ones that impact the children. And by the way, you can find these books at teachingselfgovernment.com. That's where all of the information is on the parenting trainings that I do. This is just one little piece of it. Anyway, but we get together in these meetings, either parents and child or the whole family all together, and we discuss problems. We come up with solutions and we prepare the family for successfully handling the problems that we're facing. As we discuss more and more problems together, we come up with solutions again and again. The child gets better and better at solving problems themselves. They're able to read situations and have common sense understanding of a myriad of situations because we've discussed all of the issues facing the family. The family unit really is the perfect place for somebody to learn common sense. Obviously, having other adults' experiences in life are going to teach common sense too. Building things, creating things, those are all great things for teaching common sense as well. But just your basic interactions that you're having every day can teach common sense if you're more deliberate with your communication. Speaking of deliberate communication, there is another journal. There's, they actually can come in a set if you want to get the whole set, but this is a SODAS journal. SODAS is an acronym that stands for situation, options, disadvantages, advantages, solutions. This is a type of problem solving exercise that is actually designed to create common sense decision making. It helps develop the prefrontal cortex and prepares the child to be a successful problem solver. It's used in multiple different ways. I talk about that in my TSG parenting course, but this type of an exercise can be very, very useful for the child and for the entire family. If you know this process, then you can dis discuss lots of situations in your meetings using this formula. Another tip I have for you is if you want to teach your child common sense, they need stories. They need to see what other people do in stories. How does the character solve their problem? How does grandma solve her problem? How does the neighbor solve his problem? They need to be exposed to how other people are solving their problems. This leads to increased common sense. They will have more confidence in problem solving if they see other people solving problems and then get the opportunity to talk about what happened in that particular situation when the problem was solved. So if you really want to help your child develop common sense, they have to have a lot more deliberate discussion. We want to break down things into skills. We want to have conversations as a family where we're solving problems and learning the process of solving problems while also discussing the things we see in our community community and the books and stories that we are exposed to. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure that you would like learning more about some of the things that I've mentioned today. I've talked a lot about skills, meetings, and such, and I have a video, it's a full-length class about self-government, and it's called The Not-So-Known Secret to Parenting Success. If you click on the link to that video now, you will learn a lot more about self-government that will help you creating common sense in your child.